Good afternoon. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital Management with a review of the daily trading plan for June 3rd, 2011. We have a market that's in bullish normal conditions on an annual basis. It's at the uh, midpoint of neutral with a score of 56 on a scale of 0 to 100 using weekly RSI. 10-day NDX uh, closed at minus 13, uh, which is 13% below the previous 10-day uh, trading range, so closed at a new 10-day low. Uh, the percent stretch above the 200-day moving average is down to 4.61%, which is still bullish. However, it's rated as yellow, as this is as weak as it's been in the last six months. The slope of the 50-day moving average began to degrade. It's down to 0.27%, which is in the yellow. Rated as neutral, but it's still below average, uh, considering scores of the last 180 days. ADX at 13.7 is very weak and sideways, and we can see down here in the south. East, uh, western corner that um, that the minus DI is what's contributing to the increase in ADX and that's uh, uh, makes the case for the bearish side. Looking at the gap stat um, over the last 30 days for SPY 16 times out of the last 30 the market has gapped down eight times it's closed lower for an average of minus 0.61 eight times it's reversed and closed higher at for an average of 0.51 percent. Uh, 14 times the, mar the uh, market has gapped up at the open, seven times it has reversed for a minus 0.38, seven times it's gained and closed higher for an average of 0.37, so not much advantage there. Uh, the gap downs have been the bigger follow-through days, however, that's what I take from that reading. The range stat for SPY, which is the average range of the last 30 days, plus a standard deviation, is at 1.48 percent which is about two bucks with SPY at this price. Looking at the 10-day index time series we are back in over sole conditions which triggers a bunch of channeling uh, symbols uh, to fire for the long side SPY, the Q's, semiconductors, mid caps and small caps. We also have overreaction signals in the same list of suspects plus DIA pivot point is now below 131. You can see the uh, the ATR percentage has crept above. Uh, average is now in the high range of normal at 1.16%. Uh, 10 day max pain, we've got uh, Intel, Home Depot, DuPont, JP Morgan, and Disney. Um, among the ETFs it's the VIX, Silver, uh, uh, Regional Banks, um, and Semiconductors. Uh, quite a few patterns to choose from, lots of channeling sim uh, signals among the ETFs and the large caps. Uh, the triple screen for XLV is uh, interesting, uh, and, along with uh, Procter & Gamble, Kraft, and McDonald's, which have been strength leaders. Um, those look pretty decent. And then also the 551W signals in uh, Kraft, McDonald's, Pfizer, and Merck. Five-day down pattern in McDonald's, that'll be uh, on our chart of interest. Uh, discussion later. Elder Safe Zone, things got measurably weaker on Friday across the m multiple indexes. Looking at the 30 day, or I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Dow 30 tactical summary. Uh, all these symbols over here in the red uh, under the tortoise NDX, those are all highlighted because they closed in the negative, and that means for each of those look back periods, uh, those symbols made, uh, they closed at new lows. And so if you take a look at Cisco, it's closing at 16 uh, was a uh, was a new low for the 12, 6, 3, and 1 month look backs, as well as for the 3, 5, and 10 day. So it gives you a magnitude of the pain that Cisco and Microsoft to a lesser extent are in. Um, Disney extremely weak. So this is not isolated to companies here. This is a reflection of uh, broader market conditions as well. You can see the percent winners on uh, on Friday. Exxon Mobil, McDonald's, Walmart, Chevron, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Travelers. So you're looking at uh, financials um, uh, having the strength on Friday and energy.
Among the ETFs, again, you have a number that made uh, new closing lows uh, over the anywhere from the three-day to the one-month look-back periods. Uh, many of those in the U.S. Uh, Qs, mid-caps, technology, small caps, coal. Percent winners uh, from Friday, blended commodities, gold. Uh, gold looks uh, remarkably strong inside here. It's less volatile than silver, and um, it's been a store of value. European 350 and U.S. real estate as alternative asset classes to the to the U.S. indexes here. Slope of the 30-day regression line, you can see it's making a new 30-day low here, and the uh, slope has rolled over. You can see on the short-term time series, it's pulling away from its 10-day moving average. We, we've watched that happening uh, for a couple weeks now, so we're not surprised by this. Um, on the percent stretch, it's now below average. It's uh, approaching one standard deviation below. We've just seen it fail to make any kind of progress as the bull continues to age. It's now two standard deviations below average considering the last um, 180 days. And uh, so now this slope down is, a, is almost as bad as it was uh, on the previous sell-off uh, from three months ago. So the, uh, the decline has not been as sharp, but it has been a grinding, sliding painfulness. Um, you can see if you were to draw a regression line channel here, the uh, price uh, at 130 is testing uh, the, uh, the downside of the sloping downward channel. Uh, so we'll find out what kind of market we have here when, it, uh, when we see what happens with price at 130. If it holds, um, this will be an awesome channeling entry. If it fails, then uh, we're, we're heading into sideways uh, conditions. It'll only take one or two days of normal selling here. Uh, to get out of the bull altogether and back into sideways. So we're going to be uh, very sensitive to those short-term price fluctuations. Uh, range stat percentages, um, uh, just for reference, for the, uh, the Dow 30 plus the usual suspects in the ETFs. And the holding X day periods, uh, again, for reference, with all the usual suspects. You can see the strength here in the last five days um, really coming in the globals. EFA, Japan, Latin America, emerging markets at the expense of uh, the U.S. In the uh, quality report for uh, the Dow 30, again, I like uh, red on the 31 to 60 day look back period, followed by uh, yellow or white. So I'm looking at uh, Cisco and Intel as stealth candidates here is getting better. Travelers is, a, is an interest going from yellow to white, gives it a uh, divergence in the green. And uh, McDonald's and um, American Express also going from white to green, give them uh, very positive uh, improving scores, if you will. Among the ETFs, looking at technology in Japan, uh, favorable on the, on the uh, divergence as our uh, utilities and healthcare select has gone from white to green, giving it a favorable uh, differential here. You can see just how far silver has fallen out of favor. Now that makes it a, a French momentum candidate uh, because of the strength in the previous uh, 12 months, except for the last month, which has been horrible. Um, so that actually makes it a French uh, momentum candidate if once it finds a, a, another local support level. So we'll keep that one on our radar screen. Uh, gap statistics uh, for reference, and then you can see using the Elder Safe Zone channel, uh, the last three days have just really uh, reversed the positive uh, stair step up that we had two weeks ago. The last three days have just been brutal. Pivot points calculated for all the usual suspects for reference. Uh, looking at the 30 day uh, regression line um, for each of the major indexes after we've subtracted out. SPY, so we get a market neutral. Uh, here we've got uh, improvements in uh, technology and the diamonds. Uh, blended commodities, oil and gold have just really taken off. DBC is just, that's a seven, greater than a seven uh, standard deviation move in the reversal off the bottom for blended commodities. Um, I'm looking for more strength there as we get currency weakness. 
Uh, Japan has, has come all the way back to normal and cooling off, and now you can see the globals um, starting to work here as the U.S. has begun to fail. Uh, elder safe zone, uh, only weakness from Friday's uh, price action. Top 15 winners and losers on a percentage basis for a couple different look back periods using ETFs. And uh, statistics for your reference for uh, correlation coefficients. Uh, Japan still out of correlation with uh, just about every other part of the world. That's a quick review of the, of the daily trading plan. Uh, this is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital. Keep your powder dry and risk measured.